everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Today I'll read an excerpt from the Hairstons. It's a story of an American family in black and white. As a backdrop, we should note that during that period of slavery in America, 75% of the white families did not own slaves. 75% did not own slaves. But of those that did own slaves, 60% of them owned fewer than 10. By contrast, the Hairston family owned over 10,000 slaves. Wow. This is a brief story about that. This is a story of the legacy of slavery and how that legacy has been passed into our own time. At a plantation in North Carolina, I met the heir to a family of slaveholders, perhaps the largest slaveholders in the South. On the same day in the library of the old master's mansion, I met the grandson of one of those slaves. Both men shared the name Hairston. The family saga they began to tell spanned two centuries, from the Revolution to today. Since that meeting, I have spent seven years exploring the past of the two families. I immersed myself in the immense Hairston Plantation archive, running to nearly 25,000 items. I scoured the records of countries, states, and courts. I studied the documents left by the slave traders, by the Quakers, who aided runaway slaves and the freedmen and by the Yankee officers who imposed freedom on the bitter South. I spent weeks at a time reading from the rosters of the slaves, trying to conjure some meaning from the endless litany of the dead. More important, I went out into the old plantation country in Virginia, North Carolina, and Mississippi to seek out the descendants of the slaves and recovered the testimony of the exodus. The black family's story is extraordinary. The true story of the triumphant rise of, rem of a remarkable people, the children, grandchildren, and great-great-grandchildren of slaves who struggled to pull themselves up from servitude and poverty to take their rightful places in the American mainstream. A vast panorama of history unfolds in a narrative that places black Americans at the center of our national experience. Their story touches every facet of American endeavor, from Hollywood to Wall Street, from the coal fields of West Virginia to the battlefields in Europe in World War I and World War II. From a cotton plantation in Mississippi to the com computer command center, that guided Neil Armstrong to the moon. In contrast, it has been the fate of the white family, once one of the wealthiest in America, to endure the decline and fall of the Old South. But that was only part of the tale. Beneath the surface lay a hidden history, the history of slavery's curse, and how that curse followed the slave owners for generation and generation. <coughs> Beneath layers of lies and myth existed a story the slave owners and their descendants had kept hidden for almost a century and a half. It was not a story of horror, but of love, heroism, powerful enough to shake the foundation myth of the South. And what the author was referring to was a love story about Robert Hairston, who was one of the descendants of Peter Hairston, who came over from Scotland in 1729. Robert had a plantation in Mississippi. And on his deathbed, he bequeathed his entire fortune to his slave wife. He was actually married to a white woman, but he also married this slave. He even gave her a ring. In the great state of Mississippi, they didn't want any of that. Of course, not only Mississippi, but throughout the United States. 
When he died, she inherited his fortune. The state of Mississippi did not allow it to pass, and the rest of the white families from Virginia fought it. If she had been able to get his fortune, she would have been one of the richest women in America. 